Hello there, welcome to this uh, complimentary video to a video I have already recorded on handling lead sheets away from the piano. I just felt that I wanted to do this video to prove to you even further than the previous video which also has a related article, uh, which, the links to which are both below in the description box along with other goodies. I wanted to prove my point by going through 10 uh, pieces which are very common. I was looking at some lists online about the most common or popular jazz pieces that a jazz pianist should know and uh, I just picked off some which uh, I think that you should really really know so they're kind of the top 10. I'm not going to teach you them I'm going to teach you how to learn them and I'm going to give you uh, well, one or two exercises we'll see what happens but it's my intention to give you at least some exercises here and there away from the piano and at the piano on how to master repertoire because it's just what you want that's the whole reason that you're learning to play the piano I suppose you want to be able to play pieces either accompanying yourself playing alone playing for other people improvising um, many reasons maybe you want to join a jazz band you'll have to know at least these 10 songs so as always we're going to use the jazzstudies.us um, resource which has over a thousand uh, jazz lead sheets or you can buy your own uh, real book. It links to everything again below. So we're just going to dive into it quite simply. So as always, likes, comments, descriptions are welcome. Have a link to my books, blog, podcast, and Patreon. This book here, well, it's a notebook actually, uh, begins with some of my early Hungarian studies, but we'll, we'll jump over those pages quite quickly. And go to the back. Here is a list of 114 uh, pieces that I used to play when I used to play in restaurants and bars and all that. Uh, some years ago and I just wrote these down and I played them this this is all I took with me to the bar and you know I'd like you to be able to get to that point as well and it's not as difficult as you might think it is as I said in the last one um, you need to know the piece on your internal jukebox before you have uh, any chance at being able to play it at the piano and especially being able to dissect the chord progressions and feel the structure away from the piano. I mean, there's, you have to know how the piece goes. Just for your interest, I, I have an Instagram. I post occasionally to Instagram when I upload a new video or article. So you might be interested in following me there, obviously down the composer. And uh, I've posted these pages as a picture on there. But if you're not familiar with that, I'm just going to show you the pages so you can pause the video and see the list of songs. Uh, I, I think that all these ones actually exist in here as well. So I did used to play them in the past of course plus others so just have a look you can pause the page uh, I think that's good enough for you there and then I'll show you the next ones <coughs> I'll ha I'm happy to do any tutorials I have a tutorial playlist uh, which I will link to below and uh, I'll do any tutorials that you might be interested in just ask so that's quite a nice list of uh, pieces and there's also a couple that I wanted to add to the list I think I did um, here which is All My Tomorrows which is a lovely song A Blossom Fell which is very very pretty I like the chords in that Who Can I Turn To which is lovely Cheek to Cheek or Dancing Cheek to Cheek My Way of course and uh, How Long Has This Been Going On nice songs as well so uh, here's a bit of proof if you like that uh, you know I used to just learn pieces in the way I'm teaching you. I didn't necessarily philosophize about it so much, I just did it. But um, taking the role of educator, I've had to philosophize my uh, methods and uh, share them with you uh, via these philosophies, uh, which I've entitled water pianism in, in, as an umbrella term for all this stuff, mind, body, piano. So I'm just going to look at that uh, thing. I'm going to use it on my phone. You can use it uh, on your laptop or phone, whatever. And you can print them off, I think, from that website from this website so the first one is all the things you are the purpose of this video really is to just I'm gonna say over and over again I'm gonna say things like look here it is again two five one. Oh, look floating two five one onto the four onto the six onto the three onto the two. Oh, look three six two five one. Oh, look up a fourth I want to drill these things into you because these exist in almost every piece you learn now I haven't chosen these pieces just because they have two five ones I'm not trying to trick you uh, I, I'm not, that's not my nature at all it just happens to be that uh, if you go through a whole jazz fake book uh, or every song on this, you'll just see that two five ones are everywhere. Six two five one, floating two five one, upper four. That is the jazz, you know, DNA. 
it. So you can't avoid it. Uh, that's another reason why you can't escape learning all the 12 major scales. I have a playlist, uh, Absolute Major Scale Mastery, link down below, maybe a card on the screen in the corner there. Uh, so there's help for you to master your major scales. I'm giving you all the tools you need if you have a good look around my channel. Improvisation, some theory stuff, some technical exercises, it's all here. So here I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to teach you the songs, I'm just going to maybe go through section A of each piece just to show you again and again and again to prove my case, there's a bit of a court thing here, uh, like I'm trying to prove my case here, that look, here's another 251, here, here it is again, here it is again, this is not difficult, drill, drill, drill. So first one is all the things you are, as always, uh, you must, uh, well as always likes, comments and subscriptions are welcome, but as always, uh, get the piece on your internal jukebox. If you don't know how it goes, you can't play it. If you don't know it in your mind, you can't play it at the piano. So all the things you are, go and listen to as many versions as you can. Maybe spend a day listening to that one piece. Uh, if you want, you can make this as a little playlist and just maybe focus on these. these this, could, this is an excellent starting point. These 10 songs, if you can get them into your fingers, wow, that's just huge, huge progress. You can use them to play in different keys as exercises, to improvise with, very, very marvelous use them as skeletons for other theory concepts, reharmonizations, embellishments, etc. Um, so this list, I'll just tell you now, I only wrote it out very roughly with a, a bit of a rough pencil. I can't find my pen. So what I've got here is all the things you are, autumn leaves, body and soul, fly me to the moon, how high the moon, I'll remember April, which I mentioned in the previous video, but I wanted to do it more focused in this video. Uh, Misty, of course, satin doll, a train because it's just so easy and it's such a famous piece and then uh, a bit more of a complicated piece but a, just a bit more of a challenge but it's so lovely skylark just go and listen to skylark be played by especially uh, i'll put all the links below S scott hamilton is is the most oh velvety uh, saxophonist tenor sax i've seen him two or three times alive lovely guy uh, his version of skylark or his version of anything from his saxophone is just heaven so absolutely go and listen to that um, and I think he does. He's got versions of probably all of these songs somewhere. Scott Hamilton. Uh, go and listen to them. Try this list as a starting point in your jazz journey. It's very, very exciting. So all the things you are. I don't know how long the video is going to be, uh, but hopefully you're going to stick around till the end and really be able to learn these pieces and and others. Of course, this this applies to not just jazz but pop music. You can a little bit apply the concepts to classical music even. Uh, away from the piano philosophy to fly everywhere. So uh, the first one is all the things you are, which I have prepared. So let, let's look. Uh, sometimes I might even pause the video, well, encourage you to pause the video uh, and try to answer a question. So I'll do that now. Pause the video once you've pulled up all the things you are and just see what key you think it's in, because it doesn't always tell you the key. All, all the lead sheet tells you are the chords, and in some lead sheets it doesn't even tell you how long to play the chord. It, some of them don't tell you the melody, like these. There's no melody here. Uh, some of them will only give you, well most of them will only give you the basic chords, minor 7, dominant 7, major 7. It's down to you to embellish it with 13ths and different voicings and all that stuff, and how to improvise is down to you. So a lead sheet is, this is why it's quite hard to teach it, because it's so easy, there's nothing to talk about. That's the problem. Uh, so, s pause the video if you if you wish and identify um, the two five one or the six two five one. Try to identify where the one is and how the chords preceding it have proved to you that that is the one. Uh, notice in this piece anything which is uh, going up a fourth. Notice a, f a floating two five one onto the third or maybe the sixth or something like this and see what you identify. All the things you are is the song, is the starting point for learning about 6251s, upper four, and floating 251s. It's all here. This is just the, the, the song. It's one of the songs uh, of jazz, which is just a perfect example, and it's a really popular song that everyone knows. So pause the video and really have a look. Just think, okay, what? Do don't change the key and don't look at the number sequence, because on this website, on the side, you can press number system. Never do that. You want to identify the progressions yourself because you may do it differently from what the website does. So pause the video and have a look. I will assume you have done that and uh, I will tell you what the answer is. The first part is in A flat. How do I know that? The F minor 7, now that could be the 2 of E flat. 
but the E flat is a dominant seven. You're going to learn a lot of theory in this video. I'm also going to chuck in some improvisation stuff as well. So it's going to be a pretty decent video. It can't be a two of E flat because it's not a minor seven. Uh, there's also related videos in the description box below, especially modal theory. Maybe it'll be a card here. Modal theory. You have to know the chord types for each degree of the major scale. I'll tell you it quickly just so you know it or you can write it down. The first, let's just, I'll just show you on C, I'll show you on C major. The chord types are, C, are major 7, minor 7, minor 7, major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, half diminished, which means minor 7 with a flat 5. In B, for example, B minor 7 flat 5, B half diminished, it's the seventh mode because it's the seventh note of C major. You have to know those. So, uh, F is a minor 7. It can't be the second of E flat because E flat in the chord progression is a dominant seven. So it can't be, if, if, if it were a major seven, that would help. And that's the clue. Look for the major sevens because they are often the ones. They could be the fours, but they're often the ones. So this is an F. So where's the major seven? It's A flat. Okay, is F in A flat? Well, yeah, it's the sixth. So it's probably the sixth and a sixth chord is a minor seven. So there's a, there's a strike, there's a hit. Okay, if it is the six, then we're going to imagine it's probably going to go six, two, five, one because it's jazz. So it is. What's the two of A flat? B has to be minor seven. That's what it is. So we can see a six, F minor seven. A two, E flat minor seven. Now E flat, you would think, which is the five of, e, uh, of A flat, is dominant seven. It is. So correctly, that's the six, two, five, one in A flat. F minor seven, B flat minor seven. E flat 7, A flat major 7, and then the next thing it does is, how surprising, it goes up a fourth to D flat major 7. Nothing un unexpected there. And then the next part, it goes on to C major 7. Now C is the third of A flat. It can't be a major 7 if it's the third, it should be minor 7. So, uh, obviously this is a new temporary 1. So a floating 2, 5, 1 has happened. We have floated onto the third of A flat which is our master key. You need to identify the master key. That's what I did, A flat major seven. A flat is the master key. So how do we get to C? Via its own two, five, one. That's why it's called floating two, five, one. D e minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Two, five, one in, in C, and that's what it does. So to learn this piece away from the piano, all you need to remember is when you're listening to it, Six, dum bum bum, two, dum bum bum, five, dum bum bum, one, bum bum bum, bum, upper four, dum bum bum, two, five, one, onto the third. That's the piece. That's how you need to learn these jazz pieces. Uh, I'll quickly do the next part to uh, further reinforce it. Now that three, which is major seven at the moment, as a floating three, becomes a six in a new key, which you will identify because. If you study it, you'll just realize, oh, it's doing the same thing in a different key. Um, and it's very interesting. So that C major seven then becomes minor seven. So forget the fact it's a third. It now becomes six of E flat. Where's the major seven? E flat. Just have a little look, E flat. This takes like 10 seconds in real life. I'm just explaining it to you so you, you can do it more quickly yourself. Uh, so C is six. So you can probably imagine where it's going. Six, two, five, one in the key of E flat. Six, you don't even need to look at this. Six, two, F minor seven, five, B flat seven, E flat major seven. It's probably gonna go up a fourth to A flat major seven, which it does. And then it's doing a two, five, one onto G, which is the third of E flat, which is what it did earlier. When it went to the third of A flat, it's now going to the third of E flat, which is G via its, via its own two, five, one. A minor seven, D seven, G major 7. So all the things you are is like section A1, section A2, if you want to call it like that. 6, 2, 5, 1, up a 4, 2, 5, 1, onto the 3rd. Repeat, via, you, can, you can say it in two ways. You can either say that 3rd becomes a 6 to the beginning of the 6, 2, 5, 1 of whatever it happens to be, uh, E flat. Or you can say, repeat the same pattern a 5th up. So you first of all went six, two, five, one, up a four, two, five, one onto the third of A flat, and then the whole thing repeats in E flat a fifth up. That's easier to remember instead of having this switch over on C major seven, C minor seven, changing from three as a floating third to the sixth of E flat. It's a bit 
sort of not you know a bit fuzzy, a bit awkward. So it's nice to just go, okay, that's the end, C major seven, floating two, five, one onto the third of A flat. That's the end. New part, section A2, six, two, five, one of, sorry, in the wrong key, six, two, uh, five, one in A flat, which is a fifth up, upper four, floating two, five, one onto the uh, third of E flat. So A minor seven, D seven, G major seven. Master that away from the piano, and all the things you are is done. Of course, there's a next part, but you can do that yourself. I'm not teaching you the songs here. Now, what to do with that? Away from the piano, you're only memorizing the numerical sequence. You're not remembering it in the master key. That's not important. You need to remember it numerically. This lowers conscious interference. It allows you to play in any key, and it helps you improvise. So away from the piano, you're just going to walk around your house, having listened to the piece and knowing the piece and you can even do this while you're listening to it on your internal jukebox or in real life you know really listening to the, the recording and you're going to say the numbers and you're going to confirm that you know them six um, i mean you can't forget six two five one upper four you know it, it's just in every jazz song almost there's nothing to remember six bomb 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 two the bomb 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 you know five one uh, upper four floating two five one onto the third you know, you need to go around your house saying the chords with the melody. That's a really clever thing to do. Uh, and then section, section, uh, <laughs> I said it twice, section A2 is exactly the same in this piece. It's quite easy. But you could maybe just change the key or at least say to yourself, uh, maybe you might go six, two, five, one, upper four, two, five, one to the third. Now do the same thing a fifth up. Six, two, five, one, upper four, two, five, one, onto the third, like that, but a fifth up. Then pick a key. Okay, learn it. You're going to play it probably in the key that it's originally written, because that's the key that other jazz musicians will probably know it and may ask you to play it, or a singer will probably know it in that key. So it's good. You may want to sing it in that key, but it's nice to really do it in at least another key. So then you get your major scale mastery out. You get your internal piano out. And you try it. So let's. So this starts on F minor seven, which is the sixth of A flat. So let's just completely make it different. So it's nowhere near A flat. Let's do it on uh, D. Now I'm even challenging. Well, it's not really a challenge, but I'm doing it myself now spontaneously. Key of D. So what's six two five one here? The six is uh, B. Six. Two is E. Five is A. D is one. Upper four is G. Floating two five one onto the third. Third is F sharp. So it's two five one is uh, G sharp. If you want to say it that way, or A flat, just remember they are enharmonic equivalents, but technically we're going on to the third, which is F sharp. So it's two five one is technically G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, rather than G rather than A flat, D flat, G flat, because G is in the major scale of D. It's not flattened. It's the F which is sharpened in the key of D. So don't cheat on labeling notes. Enharmonic equivalents are nice in theory, but you should really stick to the key. So the two five one in F sharp, which is the third is G sharp, C sharp, uh, F sharp. So we can play that. So six, two, five, basic chords, one. Uh, and then you're gonna go, uh, well, uh, then, uh, I've got it myself, then upper four, of course. Upper four, and then uh, the floating two, five, one onto the third. So uh, minor, G sharp minor seven. C sharp dominant seven. I'm just putting a 13 on top, but it's still a dominant seven. And then F sharp major seven. And then a fifth up from D is A. And you're going to do the whole thing again in the key of A, which starts on the sixth. And that's where we ended because that's the third of the previous one in the same way that C was the third of A flat and then became the sixth of E flat, which is uh, a fifth up from A flat. So that, that was the parallel motion of the piece we're now going to start again on f sharp which so at the moment it's the third of d i'm seeing f sharp as the third of d everything's d there everything's d to me now it's going to suddenly go minor seven and now i'm looking at the key of a because i'm playing the sixth so now i literally feel like i'm near the end of the key of a rather than near the beginning of the key of d there's a different feeling so uh, we're going to go six and then two which is b Five is E, A is one of course, upper four, the D, and then a two five one on to A's third, which is C sharp, so D sharp, 
G sharp, C sharp. So you can do that undoing it at the piano, but you would do that away from the piano, visualizing it, just saying the root. Just say the root very, very quickly in another key. Let's do it in, uh, in the key of F. So six, two, five, one, so you're gonna go right. D, 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 G, 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 C, 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 F, 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 upper four, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat. Two, five, one onto the third. Third is A, two, five, one onto A is B minor seven, E seven, A major seven. A fifth up from F for section A two is C. So you're gonna start on C six, which is A, third of the previous, sixth of the next, A minor seven, uh, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, upper fourth, F major seven. Uh, two five one onto the third again, which is E. So uh, F sharp minor seven, B seven, E major seven. That's what you need to do away from the piano. It drills your major scales. It enhances your uh, internal piano visualization. It makes your playing more fluent when you come to the piano. Uh, done. All the things you are is an amazing piece. Autumn leaves. Go to that next, as I shall. Very small one here to see. <coughs> Autumn leaves. This is giving the original key as G minor, but it doesn't matter because we're going to learn it numerically. So what do you notice? Again, pause the video about this piece. Uh, is it starting on the six? Is it doing a, is it doing a uh, two, five, one? Is it floating onto anything via a two, five, one onto the six, onto the four, onto the three? Is it, what, what's it doing? Um, and of course, go and listen to the piece if you don't know it. Go and listen to some versions. Uh, so pause the video. Have a little look and a little listen. And uh, assuming that you've done that, maybe you've got your answers. So this is doing A. Where's the major seven? That's the trick. The major seven here is on, the first one is on B flat. Okay, so C is the second of B flat. It should be a minor seven. It is, which means F would be five. It should be dominant seven. It is, B flat is the one. There is a two, five, one onto B flat. So the, so this piece is beginning on B flat and it's going a two, five, one. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the master key necessarily. You can sometimes realize that later. But for now, we're just gonna say it's in B flat. We're just gonna say it's in B flat and it's gonna go two, five, one, upper four. How unsurprising. And then it's gonna do a two, five, one onto G minor, which is the sixth of B flat. So we could say B flat is the master key. Some people use relative minors. That's why I'm hesitating. Go and read about relative minors. I don't want to get into that now. So it's two, five, one onto the B flat, upper four. So in any key, two, five, one, upper four, doesn't matter what key it is in. Uh, and then a two, five, one onto the six as a minor. That's completely okay because six should be minor seven. This is giving you a minor six chord. Okay, that's what the composer wanted. Could just be G minor. So uh, it, it, I'd also like to say that when you do a two, five, one onto a minor chord, uh, the two often has a flat five in it. Now there's reasons for that because of the scales it comes from uh, to make it enharmonic, no, sorry, to make it diatonic, which means related to the key in all notes. Uh, so if you'd like, go and read about diatonic and go and read about minor modal theory. In fact, I have videos on this stuff, it's all below, but in your own time, go and have a look at that stuff. So here it's going A half diminished. It should be going A half diminished. Uh, D7, but you can flatten uh, You can flatten the five, you can flatten the 13 like it says here. We don't need to worry about those things. Let's just play D7, it's just a five chord. Onto six. So we're doing a floating two, five, one onto the six in this piece. So that's easy. It's almost the same as all the things you are. So let's, away from the piano, you're going to learn autumn leaves and you're going to remember, right, two, five, one onto the master key, upper four, two, five, one onto the six, but minor, so minor two, five, one, which just tells you that the two has to have a flat five in it. Minor seven with a flat five. Uh, and then that six chord is a minor six. So that's nice. And then you can find the melody by ear. So, uh, What's happening on the next part? Uh, it's repeating it. It's going uh, minor two, five, one on the, on the six again, the G in this case. And then it's going back to the beginning, uh, two, five, one, upper four, and it's basically repeating. And then if you listen to the piece, you'll notice 
you'll, it, you'll make, it will make sense how this is saying to go uh, like a semitone drop. It makes sense when you actually play the piece. Again, I'm not teaching you the pieces. I don't want to go into all the melody stuff. You must discover these things on your own. The point is that to play Autumn Leaves, you're going uh, 2, 5, 1, up a 4, according to this. 2, 5, 1, up a 4. Minor 2, 5, 1 onto the 6, floating. And then you'll notice that when you're listening to the piece on your internal jukebox, it does that again. Minor 2, 5, 1 onto the 6. Uh, and then again, 2, 5, 1, up a 4, etc. I mean, you see what I mean? It's the same thing. Third one is more challenging. Body and soul. Get ready for this one. Go and have a listen if you'd like to pause the video. Some very nice versions online. Body and Soul has some complicated chords. There's lots of chords. I shouldn't say complicated chords. There's just lots of chords. So there's a bit more to remember. But, you know, you, you do it away from the piano and it's done. I can't find it. Where is it? Okay. So this says B flat is the master key. That's very useful to know, but you would have worked it out anyway because you would have looked for the first major seven chord, which is B flat. And I can just notice that after, even though it's a bit later in the piece, I'm just highlighting just suddenly now that look what happens after D flat. It goes to G flat, a fourth up. You see, it happens everywhere, 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 everywhere. So how's this going? You need to have this piece in your internal jukebox. It's a complicated piece. So I recommend now going to listen. Uh, I also rec re recommend pausing as well and identifying the chord progression. So hopefully you've done that perhaps. What, uh, what have you got? Hopefully you would have remembered or recognized that B flat is the master key. So it's starting on two. Doesn't matter what the key is now, you've got them. Now you know the template numerically, that's all you need. So it's going two. My F sharp doesn't work, I'm, I'm sorry. I should, say, I should say G flat in the key of E flat. So, <laughs> E flat minor seven, two, uh, six, because we're in the key of D flat. Everything's D flat, put yourself into D flat. Everything's D flat, there's an answer there. D flat, so two, six, two, five, one, up a four to a dominant seven, not major seven. And if you listen to the piece, it's, it works. That's how it should be. If I just bash it out from memory. Uh, uh, that's the uh, two now. Five, one. See, it's a dominant seven chord. It's not, it's not a major seven in there. It's, it's a dominant seven. sound than a major seven. Uh, so two, six, two, five, one, up a four. Very, very nice. Uh, then it's going to the three and then uh, to, uh, I'm just, I, I'm doing this myself with you. Uh, then it's going to a minor. That's, that's okay. That's quite nice. There's a whole diminished. Very nice. So three as a minor seven, that's how it should be according to modal theory. Uh, minor isn't really in major modal theory, but it's going to a, a whole diminished there, so E diminished, and then back down to two. So that's very easy to remember, really. You've done your, you've done two six two five one up a four, and now it's and then the next section you could just say it's going three, flat three, uh, two, staying on the two, but the bass is going down to the root. And when you listen to the piece on your internal jukebox, that makes sense. Again, it's that sound. There's a sort of suspended kind of sound in there. It goes down like this, and then it's going to where? To the major seven, which is C. So three minor root dominant seven, if you want to say that, but keep playing the same chord. S major seven, uh, and then three B flat six. How surprising. E flat two, A flat five, D flat one. So what it's done there is seven, three, six, two, five, one. I'm gonna show you something. 
uh, I'll demonstrate in the key of C. This, the, the, these jazz progressions are a cycle of fourths. The 251 is a cycle of fourths. The 6251 is a cycle of fourths. The 36251 is a cycle of fourths. And that's normally where jazz kind of goes. That's how far it goes. That's like how far away from the root you often will start. 36251. It's not so common to have the 7 before that. But if you do, that's another fourth. 7 to 3 to 6 to 2 to 5 to 1, that's a cycle of fourths. And I'll demonstrate that in the key of C. C is our 1. I'm going to start on the 7. 7. Uh, what am I saying? 7, 3, yeah, right. seven, seven. 3. That's a 4 in its own right. 6. That's a 4 in its own right. 2. Keeping the key of C here. That's a 4 in its own right. D to G is a 4 in its own right. D to C is a 4 in its own right. 736251 is a cycle of fourths. But don't cheat and learn them as cycles of fourths. Because if you do, you lose the master key. If you start thinking of fourths, it puts you into the key that you're in for that fourth to jump up. Don't do that. What you're doing here is from the 2, 6, 2, 5, 1, up a 4, all happens in D flat. All those numbers are based on D flat. And then it's going 3, it's based on D flat. Minor, based on D flat. Uh, minor 7, based on D flat, the 2. Uh, and then it's you know, your semitone, well, whole tone down to the dominant 7. To the 7, as a, uh, how does it, what, it, what does it want me to do here? As a half diminished. And then it's going, and that's where the two, 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1 begins. So 7 is a half diminished. That is according to modal theory. That chord is the seventh mode of D flat. That's why it works. You can improvise with the notes of the major scale of D flat because you're literally playing the Loquian, which is the fancy word for the sixth mode. So that's all you need to remember. Two, six, two, five, one, upper four. Uh, three minor, root, root, but with dominant seven. Little bit to remember there. And then seven half diminished as it should be uh three minor seven as it should be no sorry here is a dominant seven i was looking at the wrong line here's a dominant seven on the three it's not uncommon that the three or the seven are dominant sevenths without a minor that's not uncommon so just remember that three is a major is a major third interval uh six is a minor seven as it should be two e flat minor seven is a minor seven as it should be a flat is a dominant seven as it should be and then it just ends on D flat. The, the, the root doesn't have to be major seven. Here it's a six chord. D flat six. That's okay. D flat six. Uh, and then it has its own little turnaround where it goes four, three. That, that's a half diminished. So it's going four, three, six. And then it starts again. But in a way, that's a kind of five, one onto the E flat. Or you can say six, two to keep it in the key of D flat. So doing all of that away from the piano, you see that takes a bit more effort, but it's still not difficult. Next one, we can be very, very quick with this one. Fly me to the moon. It's too easy. I don't even want to pull it up. Uh, Fly me to the moon uh, is in the key of C traditionally, and it just goes, if you know the piece, maybe stop, identify the chord progression as always. So let's, why don't you just do that now? I will pull it up in case there's any odd things in here that I can highlight for you. So just pause the video and have a look. Okay, so where's the major seven on the C? It's in the key of C and it's being preceded by a six, two, five, one. Six, two, five, one, nothing difficult. F major seven, upper four, how surprising. And now it's doing a floating two, five, one onto the six. The six is minor, which is A minor, and it's doing a two, five, one. The two is B, the E is five, and the A is one, but it's minor. So that means that the two is gonna have a flat five. B minor seven, flat five. So two, five, one for two beats, then a major third for two beats, and then uh, two, five, one, and then here it goes four quickly actually, which is an odd thing. I don't really know it in that way. So let me just play it. So just, just know it, six, two, five, one, upper four. Upper 
four. Here, oh no, sorry. See, I normally go to a, a D there, but here it's going to the two earlier than what I would naturally do. So four, fl mi floating minor onto the floating two five one, floating minor two five one onto the six from here. Two beats up to the major third. Two. see what it does. Okay, so that's going four, three, six, which is strange. I don't put the four in there. I just go uh, two, I just, I just go two, five, three, six, for the major third, very common, two, five. Now you can either do one six two five or you can go to the uh floating two five one which is what this does b half diminished e seven there so floating two five one onto the six or just go back to one and then do a six two five and then start on six again it sounds quite interesting as well so that is a very easy, easy, easy piece with a tiny change at the end, but it still follows six, two, five, one, upper four, floating two, five, one onto the six. That is that piece. Master it away from the piano. How high the moon? Let's jump onto that one. So stop the video and uh, see what you see. Starts on uh, G major seven. Master key here is shown as G major seven. <coughs> So it's going, again, put it in your mind. Stop, you know, have a listen to it. Get it into your fingers. No, get it into your mind, into your bones. Then you get it into your fingers after that. And it's going one. So, uh, so one, two, five into the dominant seven, which is very interesting. So this one is quite interesting. It's going one. And then straight into a two five one onto its dominant seven. That's quite rare, but that's what's happening. So you're now the I'm now on the dominant seven of the master key in my mind. So that's done a two five one onto the dominant seven. Now what's it doing next? Let's have a look. F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven. Well that's very interesting because that's doing E flat is the dominant seven of F via 251. So there's a very interesting pattern there. It has done one, whatever the key is, one, 251 onto its dominant seven, and then a 251 onto its dominant seven. So that's quite a nice clever progression. And then it's doing a 251 back to the root, but it's a minor. So it's a minor 251. So the A being the two is gonna be half diminished, flat five, E flat. D7 to G minor 7 uh, and then it's doing a then it's going then it's doing it see that's very interesting see this is the odd little things in jazz that you'll just notice then it's doing a minor 251 but onto a major <laughs> and then it's going how unsurprising 6 2 5 1 starting again so let's get that into your let's do that uh, at the piano so uh, in a different key so 1 Let's just confirm the numbers actually. One major seven, two five one onto its dominant seven, and then a two five one onto its dominant seven, and then a minor two five one onto the root, and then a minor two five one onto the root, but it's major. So that's a nice little chord sequence to memorize. So let's do it in the key of, uh, I don't know, E flat. So one. I can hear the piece somewhere, there's music. going to its dominant seven which is d flat so we're already we're already on the two that's why it itself becomes minor seven a flat dominant seven major seven d flat to its dominant seven which is b the second of b is d is well c sharp but we're on that already so we that, that's why you don't change you play its minor seven five one and then 
the master key was E flat, so now it's doing a minor 2, 5, 1 onto E flat minor 7, which is F minor 7 flat 5, B flat 7 onto E flat minor 7. And then again, uh, 2, 5, 1 minor, but onto the major of E flat. So that's the, uh, the section there, which is very interesting. Uh, so why don't you play around with that? And again, walk around, try it in different keys, but you have to master the numerical sequence first. Listen to versions, say the numbers, the numbers, not the key, not the letters, but the numbers as that song is going. So I can hear it in my mind. Bom, ba -dom, bom, bom, bom. I mean, I'm not a singer, but I can hear it. So it starts. It starts on that second A. There, that's beat one. So, one, bom, 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 two, but on five, but on one onto the dominant seven. Now onto its, do its dominant seventh. Two, five, one onto its dominant seven. Now the minor two, five, one onto the root. Bom, 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 minor. Bom, bom, two, five, one onto the major. Uh, and then it continues. Bom, 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 six, two, five, bom, 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 one again. So just remember that when you, when you do the first minor two, five, one, it's onto a minor seven. The second time you do a minor two, five, one, you're going onto the major seven, and then six, two, five, one. All the same stuff. I'll remember April. This is the next piece. Have a little look. Pause the video, go and listen to it. And what do, you, what do we see here? This gives as G major. So it's going one major seven to six. Minor seven to minus six, which is very nice. Now it's doing uh, two. Just identify the numbers, and you'll see the patterns. Two, five, three, six, <laughs> two. I'm smiling because you know where it's going. Five, one. I mean, come on, you know. So very easy. One major seven six. I can hear the piece. It's major seven six after the minor seven. Minus six. Now three, five, uh, sorry, two, sorry, two, five, three, six, two, five, one. And then something happens in another key and you can work that out for yourself because it's, it's section B. We, 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 I can very quickly say you can see it already. Two, five, one to B flat, which is the minor of G. So the section B, you can just say it's doing a two, five, one into the minor. You'll rem remember it that way, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I don't want to go onto each piece in too much detail because the video is getting a bit long, but you get the idea. Uh, Misty, pull out the music, classic piece. Uh, again, this is not about learning the melody. You can do that by ear. What do you see in Misty? Feel free to pause the video and have a little look. So. The first section, very, very easy. We don't really need to even talk about it. There's no oddities in here. This is just one. And then a two, five, one onto the four. So the four of E flat is A flat in the master key. So B flat, E flat, A flat, two, five, one onto the four. So. Now, that, now it's going, the four, now this often happens. When you're on the four, it goes to a minor. That can happen quite a lot. You're just playing something, you do a two, five, one, you get your C, you go up a four, and then you play a minor, and then you come back to one again. That can happen a lot. Stuff happens on the four. And what happens here is one, two, five, one onto the four, and then it goes to a minor seven, and then up a four. <laughs> Unsurprising, right? So just remember that little trick. So let's just do that in a different key. And then it goes back to one, and it goes six, two, five, three, six, two, five, one. It's a, to, as a turnaround, three is G. G minus seven, C minus seven, F minus seven, B flat seven, start again. So uh, in a different key, let's, let's just confirm we know the number sequence. One, two, five, one onto the four, my eyes are shut. Two, five, one onto the four. The four becomes a minor seven and goes up a four to a dominant seven. And then we're back to one, uh, six, two, five, 
the V6251. So let's do that in the key of C, just to soften things a little bit. So, uh, one. Now 251 into the four. Can you hear the melody? Now the four goes to a minor seven. Up a four. Back to a one. Six. That's very, very nice. That's an easy piece. And then you can work out uh, the second part uh, yourself in exactly the same way. Let's have a quick look at Satin Dull. Three more to do. Satin Dull is so easy again. That's the purpose of this video, just to show you again and again and again that it's not as difficult as you think it is, or have been led to believe it is. Satin Dull, D minor 7. G7, so that's probably a 2-5 in C. So let's say it's in the key of C, uh, which it says, and that's also the last chord. Often you can look for the first major 7 or the last major 7. That's the key of the piece, often. So here it's going 2-5, 2-5, 3-6, 6 but the 6 is a dominant 7 with a major 3rd. Nothing unusual happens all the time, as you've seen. Uh, and then it's going, uh, so yeah, 2-5, 2-5, 3-6, 3-6. 6, 2, flat 6, flat 2, 1. And then 4, 3, 6 to start again. This is a bit quite, quite uh, unusual, but it's correct. 4, 3, 6, 2. So 2, I'm not really looking here, if you know the piece. Stays on the A. It's going flat six, flat two. Like that, that's better. That's nice, that's good. Satin dull, very easy. Two six, two five, two five, three six, three six, six two, flat six, flat two, one. And then four, three, six, to start again. Uh, a train is very, very easy. Take the A train. I think it's under here as. Take the A train. I won't. Uh, Go into a lot of detail with this one at all because it's just too easy. One. Two with a seven and a flat five. It, when music says sharp, sharp 11, you can also play flat five, which is nice, often. Experiment. Uh, so this is nice, D7, flat five. And then two, bom, 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 two, five, one. famous melody line which you can work out for yourself two five and that's it and then when it goes to the next part unsurprisingly it goes up a four bottom 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 down to two as a uh, major third but then it drops to a minor seven which I said happens it happens on the four it can happen on the two as well five back to one two flat five two five one it's very very easy 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 piece to play around with Last one, Skylark, as we approach the uh, the hour. Perhaps you've watched this in more than one sitting. If so, welcome back. If not, uh, you deserve a medal. Skylark. But I really hope you're gonna do this. You know, you, you're playing the piano because you'd like to learn pieces. And this is how you do it. I'm just proving to you again and again and again. Look at this piece, look at this piece. Look how easy it is. Just master these progressions away from the piano. Get the piece on your internal jukebox. Come to the piano, play the chords, find the melody after it. Doesn't matter, it's jazz. It's not about the melody. It's about embellishing chords, improvising. Uh, so, Skylark is a beautiful piece, and this is very, very nice to learn. So, pause the video and have a look. See uh, what key you think it is in. It, the first major seven uh, is, well, E flat major seven is the key. So, there's a little hint. So, stop the video, have a look. So what you will find is there's one little interesting thing. The third chord has a slash. This is called a slash chord. It means the letter after the slash should be played in the bass, which is G. That highlights the key of that chord. So the fact that the third chord is a G 
and the notes of the chord that it's connected to are is E flat major seven, that kind of gives you G minor shape. So it's not wrong to play uh, a G minor seven there. If you play the F in G minor seven as a shape in the key of E flat, that's a nine. The D is a major seven. So it all sounds very nice. E flat major nine or G minor seven. So to keep the numerical order nice and clean here, see it as this one, two, very easy, three, four, back to one. And then you're going to go, oh my goodness, what on earth is that? A seven, sharp 11 or flat five. And this, is the, this is the classic Skylark chord and it goes A7, I'll explain it in a moment, down to A flat major 7 which is the 4. So it's going flat 5, 4. Why is it doing flat 5? This doesn't happen all the time but this is called a tritone substitution. Uh, the title tells you exactly what it is. You're substituting what chord was there for its tritone. You can very quickly find a tritone by finding the flat 5. So this is going one, two, three, four. In any key, do it in the key of F. One, two, three, four. Back to one. So I'll, I'll, I'll follow the, chord, the chords in the piece here in E flat. So one, two, three, four, one. Now I'm landing on A flat. The, tr the chord I've come from is A. A's, A is the tritone of E flat. How do I know that? At, because there's two ways to, to, to find it. Because it's exactly in the middle. The tritone is in the middle of the chromatic scale. The flat five of E flat is A. One, two, three, four, five, flat. That's a tritone. That's it. Three, there's three whole steps. But from A, the flat five of A is E flat. See, they're paired. Tritones are paired. It has a very unique you know, sound. It's very, very nice. What happens often is when, when you want to play a 5-1 movement, you can replace the 5 by its tritone. The 5's tritone will always be a semitone above the 1 that you're trying to get to. So this would have been uh, E-flat to A-flat, which is 5-1. But the composer didn't want to stay on E flat all that time and then just drop down to A flat major 7. So uh, he decided to play E flat's tritone substitution with a flat 5 and then land on the 4th. It would have been E flat dominant 7, which is a 5, to A flat major 7. But it's just a bit, you know, boring to go 1 two three four one major seven and then make it a five one dominant seven up a fourth that does happen but you know he, he obviously decided hmm i'm going to go one two three four one tritone substitution for the e flat that i would have had to change to a dominant seven because it's the five one and we're landing on a flat going up a fourth there so that's what's happened i hope you understand that try it in a different key mentally away from the piano. Let's do it in the key of uh, B flat, for example. So B flat major seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, E flat major seven, back to one, B flat major seven. It's, it would, it's going up a fourth to E flat now in this key, I'm demonstrating. So it would have to be B flat major seven, how it ended, and then B flat dominant seven, so nothing changes, and then up a fourth to E flat. But he wants to use the tritone sub instead. So the tritone sub is the flat five. One, two, three, four, five. It's E. As I said, one semitone above the target note. So that would be one, two. I'll do it a bit lower. One, two, three, four, one. Tritone sub with a flat five onto the four. Uh, and then it, uh, it goes on from there. So that's very, very, very nice. Uh, so do please enjoy that piece yourself. After the uh, one, two, three, four, one tritone of, of one, one's tritone, up a four uh, for only two beats, it is then doing 
uh, a 3, minor 7, 6 as a dominant 7, which is not unusual again, 2 as a dominant 7 with a major 3rd again, which isn't uncommon as long as it falls onto a minor just after, which is what it does, 5, 2, 5, 1, and then it's going uh, 6, 2, 5, 1. So it's all the same stuff, even in a very complicated piece like Skylark, Sorry, the melody is here. One, two, three, four, one, tritone. Uh, four, sorry, down to four, A flat. Two, five, then it's going three, six. to know that piece and so on the second time round you can see it goes E flat and then it goes B flat 7 with a sharp 9. Sharp 9 is a blues note with the dominant 7. Not this now. And that's what the melody does that. Or you can play the I, let's play the A because it's a semitone out but it should be A flat. That's the gentle way but it's nice to put the, the A in it. Make it a bit more jazzy. Um, and then it goes into the next part and you can identify that for your yourself. And you'll notice there's a tritone substitution in there too. I've made an hour video, which is rare, proving to you that jazz is based, all the popular jazz songs, plus, I mean, there are just, you know, a thousand, well, there's 1,400 on that website. But if you can get 100 songs or 50 songs, you should see that with a lot of listening and a lot of mental practice away from the piano, that you can get these pieces into your mind very easily because it's just two five one six two five one three six two five one sometimes sometimes seven three six two five one quite often floating two five one onto the six onto the three or the two or the four one happened onto the dominant seven in uh uh i think that was i'll remember april i forget uh i'll remember april perhaps or how high the moon uh one of them it went two five one onto the dominant seven two five one onto the dominant seven i think it's how high the moon and uh, these things happen all the time. So if you can just master that concept and play six, two, five, ones in all the keys and then go up a fourth, that's another thing, going up a fourth. It happens all the time. I'll just do it in the key of C. You just get used to playing, you know, three as a half diminished, it's, oh, it's common. Or play three as a dominant seven with a major third, it's common. Or play three as the uh, 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 minor seven if you want, because that can sometimes happen your choice play the three in any of those three options or play the six often as dominant seven with major third or minor seven the, the two is always uh, minor seven but if it is a dominant seven with a major third it's going to fall to a minor to be a two five is always dominant seven you can embellish that with an, a sharpened five you can add a nine to it you can flatten the nine you can sharpen the nine you can put a 13 you can flatten the 13 as a five chord, there's lots of things to do. And then one, it's a major seven, it can be six. Uh, if you do, a, sometimes you'll see, often you'll see a minor two, five, one, which just means that the two has a flat five in it. So just practice these progressions in one key, in every key. You know, so let's just do three, six, two, five, one in E, in, in uh, C, starting on three. Even starting on the seven, if you want. The seven is a half diminished. Seven. Uh, three as a major third chord three six minor seven two five one upper four let's do a floating two five one onto the six which is a so floating two five one onto the six uh, this is what happens 
This is all jazz is, as I've proved in a variety of songs. All the things you are, autumn leaves, body and soul, climb to the moon, how high the moon, I'll remember April, misty, satin doll, A train, take the A train, and uh, Skylark. And uh, there are hundreds of others. Listen, listen, listen. And then it's about practicing, improvising, embellishing the chords, adding nines, adding elevens, etc. And uh, finding your sound. So hopefully, over that hour, you have, uh, you know, you're going to be able to acquire all the repertoire in jazz that you've ever wanted. You're not going to be distracted by lead sheets. You're going to look at it. You're going to master it away from the piano. You're going to listen to it a lot. You're going to master the chord progression numerically. And you're going to come to the piano without needing the lead sheet and uh, do what you want. Make some good jazz. As always, finally, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, podcast, and Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.